set my wonderful alarm on my phone so that I can be mindful of the time on this Tuesday as I give people an opportunity to come on into the room. Bless the Lord, Anthony. How are you doing, sir? Glad to see you tuning in tonight. Hey there, Miss Shirley. How are you? Hope you had a wonderful day at work today. Hey there, Marsha. How you doing today, lady? I'm going to be moving forward in this teaching. I believe tonight will actually uh, be the conclusion for this teaching, part three. That's what I think. You know how that goes. Sometimes it lasts a little longer, but it's been a wonderful teaching. Bless the Lord, Pastor Presley. How are you doing today, sir? I'm glad that you are tuning in to tonight's teaching as we continue in this powerful, needed lesson, lesson on spiritual parenting. Amen. And so I'm giving people just a few moments to come into the room. Um, I like to take the opportunity uh, to greet people. I don't spend a lot of time on that. Uh, you like my hair, Shirley? My poetic justice hair? <laughs> As you all can see, I have braids in because I'm preparing myself. I'm so excited, people of God. I am getting ready to leave in in just a few days to go to Africa, amen, and so I am so excited about it. Um, I'm looking forward to God doing great and wonderful things as I travel abroad, and so I needed to braid my hair so I could be free and didn't have to worry about that, and so um, I don't see everybody's name that actually pops up, so if I don't, you know, give you a, a shout out. It's not that I'm being rude. I just don't see everybody as they come on, but I don't spend a lot of time on that either. Hey there, Marie. I can see that you on in Tyrena. How y'all doing? Hey, my wonderful husband is on too. Hey there, baby. And so tonight, y'all, we're going to go in and get started with uh, uh, this particular teaching on spiritual parenting. It has been such a wonderful teaching. Um, if you missed any of the parts, I would strongly suggest that you go to my YouTube channel. Uh, you can see parts one and two on my YouTube channel. It will truly bless you. Uh, it is a term that we hear a lot of, but we don't have a great understanding. And one of the things that I've shared is that spiritual parenting isn't new. Having a spiritual mother or father, that's nothing new, amen? And so uh, a lot of times, because we have so many different titles that are just floating around nowadays, you know, we hear something else like a, that's my spiritual father or that's my spiritual mother. And we think, oh, here's something else that's added. But it's nothing new. It's biblical. Amen. I always like to back things up with scripture. Uh, my foundational text for this particular teaching uh, can be found in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4. And I'm going to look at verse 14. And the subtitle in my Bible, I'm reading from the New King James Version, says, Paul's paternal care. Paternal care. And it says, I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children, I warn you. For though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, he said, you may have had a lot of people that may have taught you things about the Lord. You may have had 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. Even though you have people today that say they got 50 different spiritual fathers, which is ridiculous, amen? Paul is making it clear. You may have had a lot of teachers, but everybody ain't your spiritual father. Everybody's not your spiritual parent. And so he said, yet you do not have many spiritual, many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Now, he's making a, a, a notation here about the fact that these are individuals that came to know the Lord through him. Amen. Through his relationship with them. One thing we have to understand. Hey, Tamara, how you doing, baby? One thing we have to understand is that... Um, uh, your spiritual parent doesn't necessarily have to be the one that actually led you to Christ. Amen. Uh, one of the things that I've shared is a person can attend the church and they have a pastor. Uh, but just because a pastor pastors a group of people, it does not mean that that pastor is the spiritual mother or father of all of those that they actually pastor. Bless you, Aisha. 
And so um, it's important to know that there's a difference. And in this particular teaching, we have actually talked about some of the identification marks of a spiritual parent. And one of the things that I said is it is more than just teaching you spiritual principles. It's more than that. And so uh, you have to understand that when you look at a natural relationship uh, with parenting and a spiritual uh, spiritual parenting relationship, it has a lot of comparisons. Amen. And so just a brief, quick review, and I'm going to get right into it. Uh, we discussed, discussed a lot of things. I said you had some examples in the Bible of spiritual parenting, like you had Elijah to Elisha. And we know that when Elijah was taken up, Elisha uh, uh, was there and his words was my father, my father. And in the Bible, the word father is not capitalized in that particular passage of scripture. Uh, we understand that Elijah and Elisha was not blood relatives, but Elisha referred to Elijah as his father, my father, my father, as he was being taken up. We have Jesus with the 12 disciples, amen. Moses and Joshua, another example. Naomi to Ruth, if you want to talk about a spiritual mother and a daughter, Naomi to Ruth. You know, Deborah and Barak had a, a, a relationship. Eli to Samuel. Mordecai to Esther. Mordecai and Esther, that was his blood uh, cousin, amen. Uh, but, you know, Esther's family died early on. He took her up underneath his wings, but he dealt with her and guided her in so many different ways. And so he was like a spiritual father to her. Hey there, Jackie. And so one of the things that we I shared is that when it comes down to spiritual parenting, one of the key components to that type of relationship is true discipleship. You cannot really be a true spiritual parent to anybody uh, if, 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 if you don't spend time with them. Discipleship is about spending time with individuals. Look at the life of Jesus. Look at Elijah. Elijah said to Elisha, if you see me when I go up. And you know, Elijah was going different places and he would tell Elisha, wait, stay here. And Elisha was like, oh no, nah, I'm going with you. And so you got to understand there's a connection that takes place in a uh, spiritual parent parenting relationship. And so you can't ignore discipleship when you think about spiritual parenting. Uh, one of the things that I say is spiritual parenting involves is intimacy and intimacy is a closeness. And so it can't be some fly by night relationship with somebody don't even know you. And let's be for real. People are quick to do that today. Okay. People are quick to address you as mom or dad. And, you know, and for real, there is no real connection. There has to be connection on both parts. Amen. And so spiritual parenting involves intimacy. You know, uh, it involves talking. You need to communicate. The only way that you can really get to know the one that that is your spiritual mother and father and for you to get to know your son or daughter is that there has to be some communication. So you can't see each other, let's just say once a year, and that's my son or my daughter. No, there has to be some communication that takes place on a consistent basis. I love the Facebook post uh, that I shared when I talked about the communication factor. And uh, Ra Ra had posted a, a post and it said, some talk to you in their free time. And some talk to you, some take their, let me say that again. Some talk to you in their free time and some free their time to talk to you, learn the difference. And so when you think about being a spiritual parent, you will free up some of your time to deal with your sons and with your daughters. And so when there is a spiritual parenting relationship, it is imperative that it is very clear as to where you all stand in the relationship because again, you can think that this person is one thing to you and they don't view you the same way. So like with any other relationship, eventually there has to be a conversation, amen, had between the parent and the son or daughter. And so, you know, you don't want to be thinking you're somebody's spiritual mother or spiritual father and, 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 and they just see you as a sister in Christ. You know, they just see you as, you know, one of their, one of their co-labors, you know, and, and that's about it. There's different dynamics to the parenting. So guess what? Talk about it. Have the conversation. Bless the Lord, Bishop Jones. How are you? Um, and so, you know, again, parenting goes beyond biblical topics. Uh, 
you know, there has to be boundaries in spiritual parenting relationships. And I also said that I think it's imperative that just like in a natural home, uh, it's good to have a mother and a father. I believe that in the dynamics of the spiritual arena, that it is also important that we have a spiritual mother and a spiritual father. I said it's important to have these things because just like in the natural, there are some things that a child, a female child, don't want to talk to her dad about. So she can go to her mom on that. But there are some things she needs to hear directly from her dad. And so if there are boundaries that set up in the kingdom, one of the things that I said is that we wouldn't have so much spiritual incest. Hello. Uh, if, if we had some spiritual boundaries and we had spiritual mothers and spiritual fathers that, you know, you can go to that mother and talk to that mother about your, your, your issues. We may not have that much, much spiritual incest in the kingdom if we had boundaries, because again, spiritual parenting, the conversations go beyond telling me about the Bible. It gets intimate. It gets personal. And so we need to be mindful of that. And so I, I, that's my opinion. I think that it's good for a person to have both. And I also said that being in a, a, a parent to one individual and you're married, let's just say you're married, that doesn't automatically make your spouse your son or daughter's spiritual mother or father. It's not an automatic thing. When it comes down to these parenting relationships, there has to be a mutual connection, a mutual drawing to each other. And so you may be a person's spiritual father. That does not make your wife, your son or daughter's automatic spiritual parent. It's a wonderful thing if the dynamics work like that, where a husband and wife team is the spiritual parents of a particular son or daughter. You know, uh, but that's not always the case. And so um, when you think, uh, let me see what else I want to review before I get there. Um, some of the things I said spiritual parents do, they uh, it's not about being seen, but it's about serving. I said parents love and encourage their children. They set an example for their children. Uh, they give you a sense of significance, your spiritual parents. Um, they offer a place of safety for their sons and daughters. Uh, um, and uh, what else do I want to say? All right. And then when I said, you know, I said a lot of people are in the body of Christ and they feel like something is missing in their life. Um, they may have a desire for a spiritual parent and they may realize that I don't have a spiritual mother or father. Well, you know, if that is something that you desire, and I believe that we all should have that desire. And I believe that there comes a point in time when we all can be a spiritual parent to someone as we grow and mature. Uh, because even when you think about the principles of di uh, discipleship, you shouldn't always be uh, the one that's being the disciple. You should eventually become a disciple maker, just like Jesus imparted into the 12 and then he sent them on to do the assignment. It should be the same thing. We, just like a parent, we raise our children up. Just think in the natural. We raise our children up. We teach them, but guess what? We want to instill so much good stuff in them so that eventually they will step out and they too will become parents themselves. And so it's the same thing in the spirit realm. We want to raise up sons and daughters who too can eventually become parents themselves. And just because they grow up and just because they have sons and daughters of their own in the natural it doesn't stop your child from being your child, right? So, you know, the dynamics of the relationship change, but your son or your daughter is still your son and daughter. So, if that's your desire, you know, that's something that you pray about and allow the Lord to actually lead you to who it is that you should connect to. God will put it in the heart of the one that you may be uh, uh, questioning God about or seeking. He'll, the two of you will eventually get on the same page. Amen. Um, and know that the best relationships happen naturally. So that was just my little quick review. So now I'm going to get into uh, part three of this teaching. So when it comes down to it, when you connect to a spiritual parent, please understand the dynamics of the relationship. You give your spiritual mother and father access to your life. It's not just them teaching you about the Bible. It's not about them just simply praying with you. But if you have a spiritual parent in your life, you give them access 
to your life. Meaning you give them permission, amen? You know, you give them liberty or the ability to approach you. Guess what? That's simply called accountability. Because in this type of relationship, there is a level of accountability that is established. Again, in the relationship, in the communication, you know what takes place. So you're giving them access. You know, and so when you are accountable to someone, it demands that you adopt, amen, it demands that you adopt a heart of vulnerability, which means you open yourself to the stabilizing forces of others, uh, other trusted ones in your life. A lot of people don't like being vulnerable, but if you're going to have a true spiritual uh, a parenting relationship with your spiritual mother or father, you as the spiritual son or daughter, you, you have to allow yourself to be vulnerable. And a lot of times people don't have relationships where they are accountable to anyone because they don't like being vulnerable. But again, you give them access to your life. And so true accountability, people of God, it requires vulnerability, not just transparency. You got to be willing to put the guards down. You have to be willing to be open and honest with those that you are connected to with your spiritual mother and father. When you think about accountability, accountability is a great thing. It serves many purposes, but one of the things that it helps to do is it serves as a great preventive purpose. Amen. When you think about it, preventive to keep one from falling. Because if you have a genuine relationship with your spiritual mother and father, you talk. And so even if you're having a moment and you're going through, if you are honest about what it is that you're going through, they can help you from doing what you may feel like doing. Because just because you say sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, it doesn't mean that you aren't going to go through things. It doesn't mean that you aren't going to have struggles. And so, you know, uh, accountability with your spiritual parent, it can be a preventive maintenance to keep you from falling. Spiritual parents, people of God, have your permission. Hear me clearly. They have your permission to ask you the hard questions. Oh, the questions that your pastor just may not ask you or the questions that sister so-and-so may not ask you. But your spiritual parents, they have your permission because of the relationship to ask you the hard questions to help you to avoid possible misbehaviors. And so accountability will help you to navigate after the fact. Because sometimes you experience things and that relationship with your spiritual mother or father can actually, actually help you to navigate after the fact uh, of a situation. You get involved in something, y you know, you do it. It is taking place, whatever it may be. So now you having that conversation. Again, it's no need to lie because if you are not honest with your spiritual mother or father, then they can't really help you in the areas that you may be challenged in. But if you are honest, they can help you to navigate and say, okay, well, let's talk about it. It happened. All right, we're we going to deal with it. Let's just talk about it. Let's, let's see what we're going to learn from this. What can be done different? You know, they'll have conversations with you about everything that you may have been experiencing or feeling prior to a situation. And so, people of God, as a son or daughter, lion won't help you. A spiritual parent, just like a natural parent, cares for you, even after you mess up. My God. <laughs> you got to understand, your natural parent may get upset with you, may not like some of the decisions that you make, but guess what? They care for you. And so, even after you mess up. They still care for you. Same thing with your spiritual parent. A spiritual parent is not going to drop you like a hot potato just because you failed. Just because you did something that you should not have done. And so they care for you enough that they will love you even after you mess up. When you think about accountability, because a lot of times people don't like accountability. Accountability, people of God, is not control. 
See, oftentimes we think that, you know, just because somebody is, uh, we accountable to somebody that they actually have control over. No, that's not what accountability is. Because again, it's, it's a situation when you give a person access to your life. You let them know you have every right to question me. You have every right to correct me. You have every right to encourage me. You have every right, you know, to rebuke me. You have every right. And so accountability is not control. Spiritual parents do not dictate and control your decisions. Amen. They do not control and dictate your every single move. Again, most of us are adults. And so we're adults and we have spiritual parents. You are an adult. You commune with your spiritual mother and father, but they don't dictate and control your every move. A good spiritual parent that will give you guidance, amen? They will give you wisdom. But the spiritual son or daughter is the one that actually makes the final decision in a matter. You may be deciding or wanting to do something and, you know, you may say, you know, uh, give me some advice on this. So what do you think about this? You know, at the end of the day, you make the final decision as the son or daughter, not your spiritual parent. They'll give you wisdom. They'll give you advice. But you make the final decision. Amen. And so you have to understand that in any given situation, nobody can make you do anything. And sometimes, you know, like in life, sometimes people got to experience stuff in order to learn. Now, experience is a hard teacher versus wisdom. But, you know, you can learn from experience, too. And you say, OK, who are our spiritual parents? Are they anybody in particular? That's a good question. Your spiritual parents, your spiritual mother or spiritual father is that person that God has really connected you heart to heart with. That spiritual parent may be somebody, They may, a lot of times in those situations, is not etched in stone, but usually it may be somebody that may be older than you. They don't have to be 50 years older than you, but they sometimes are older than you in the natural. Sometimes they're older than you in the spirit because you can be older in age, but spiritually you're immature. Spiritually, you may be new in Christ. And so it's one of those things where, you know, you begin to build a relationship. Like when you're dating somebody, you dating somebody and you realize, oh, it's something special here. Something's really going on. Something, there will be something that clicks in your heart with an individual who is a spiritual mother and father in your life. There will be a mutual connection. And the reality of it is have the conversation. It's important to have the conversation and let it be known, you know, how you all see each other. Amen. And so I pray that that uh, answered you, Aisha, because again, just because you have a pastor, your pastor isn't necessarily your spiritual mother and father just because they are your pastor. And so, uh, again, ability, accountability is not control. So at the end of the day, every person is responsible for their own decision. Romans 14, 12, it tells us, so then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. We may give advice to our spiritual sons and daughters, but at the end of the day, they make the final decision. At the end of the day, they have to give an account to God for whatever they do, just like we all do. And so choices activate the reaping and sowing principle. So whatever a son or daughter may do, and even if it goes beyond the wisdom and the guidance of the spiritual mother and father, guess what? Their choices activate the reaping and sowing principle. The word of God remains the same. And so spiritual parents want to teach their sons and daughters to become self-disciplined and to be self-motivated. That is what a spiritual parent wants to do. They want to teach you to be self-disciplined and self-motivated. They simply want to help their children, <laughs> excuse me, to discern the will of God. We don't want to have to be the ones to tell you everything. We want to teach you. We want to train you. But we want you to be able to hear from God. We may be a voice that God is using in your life. But we want you to be able to discern God's will for your own life. Amen. While we hold you accountable to carrying out his will. Because a spiritual parent is going to hold you accountable. Bless the Lord, Pastor Teresa. How you doing, beautiful? And so... When it comes down to it, parents push their sons and daughters to be better. 
When you think about it, in the natural, even with our spiritual sons and daughters, we want to push our sons and daughters to be better. And again, you know, the only way you're really going to know where your spiritual son or daughter is, is you have to communicate in order to know where they really are, what areas they need to work on. Because these are things that you will discover by rubbing lives with them, by spending time with them, by talking to them. So you need to ask them questions. Like I said, a spiritual parent, you give them the, the, the right to ask questions. My sons, my daughters, let me tell you something, they know in a heartbeat. They are, they are, especially if they're single, I don't play with them, so you're single. So let me ask you. And, and Mr. Bus connected. So when last time you had sex? When last time you've been intimately involved? Because you really need to know where they are so that you can know what they're dealing with. You know, hey, you may not, but what, what you feeling right now? So you got to be able to ask these questions. If they used to be ones to get high, you've been, you been, you been having any urges lately? You have to know these things. You have to communicate. And so some of the type of questions that you may ask your spiritual sons or daughters, not all at one time. These are things that you talk about over time, but you may ask them about their relationship with Jesus Christ. How's your relationship? You know, uh, uh, um, what are some areas in your life that God is uh, uh, actually, you know, pressing you out about right now to work on or to change? Um, how's your thought life been? What's been going on with your mind? Because we know the mind is a, is a, is a, is a serious uh, battlefield, you know, so you had them ask them questions so that you can know. Not just see and praise the Lord, but no, have them conversations. What's going on with your thought life? What struggles are you having in your life? Let's talk about it. Now, I, I may call you and you may say, I'm blessed and highly favored. Okay, yeah, amen. But what's up with you? Let, let's talk about what's really going on with you. Uh, you know, you know, you can ask them about their spiritual life. Have you shared your faith with anybody? Because again, you deal with so many different dynamics. You know, what are some of the things that have disappointed you the most in your life? You know, communication communication is so key. And so it's important to ask those things. Guess what? If they're married, talk to them about their relationship with their spouse, their marriage relationship. How is the marriage? If they are parents, talk to them about their parenting skills and their relationships and, you know, different things of that nature. So it's about communicating. So spiritual parents can share sometimes too. Even though you may be the one that... <laughs> That's one of my daughters right there. Kids talking about she showed on. That's right. She know I don't play. I, I will ask you in a heartbeat. We we gonna talk about it. You know, and sometimes I, I've had conversations, they be like, oh my, I can't even believe you just asked me that. Why not? Why 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 can't you believe I just asked you that? I mean, you know, and a lot of times based on the response, you already know without the answer. And how many of y'all know sometimes your spiritual mother and father will ask you a question and they already know. Just like the Lord, when they was in the Garden of Eden and they had sinned and they was trying to hide themselves and he asked them, where are you? You know, where are you? You know, did you think the Lord was unaware of where they were? You know, what God was really trying to see was, was Adam and Eve going to humble themselves enough to be real about what they had done? And so sometimes your spiritual parent will ask you questions that they already know, but they want to uh, see where you really ate. Where, where you really at? And then you got just you got some of your sons and daughters that they'll always well you know uh, let's skip the subject. Can we talk about something else? You know, or I don't want to talk anymore right now. Really? Oh, okay. You may not want to talk about it anymore right now, but guess what? We will talk about it again. Amen. And so again, spiritual parents. As a spiritual parent, please understand. That's right. You need to hit all them like Shirley. Hello. <laughs> but as a spiritual parent. Even though you may communicate with your sons and daughters, it's okay if you share some of your struggles or some of the things that you've actually been through or may even be going through. You want to know why? Guess what? It lets them know, wow, you're human. You're not superwoman or superman, but you're actually human. Because again, don't nobody want to have a one-sided relationship where... They can't relate to the individual that they are connected to. Sometimes your real life struggles let people know that they can actually relate to you and connect to you. It lets your sons and daughters know that you are human. It lets them know that you are normal. And it helps them to keep from feeling alone with their issues. 
you know, because sometimes we don't we don't want to talk about our stuff. But if they know, okay, well, I, I, I ain't got to feel bad if I talk about this. You know what I'm saying? So don't be afraid to open yourself up with your sons and daughters as well. Spiritual parenting is wonderful. <coughs> Excuse me. Spiritual parenting is wonderful. But know that there has to be established order in the relationship. There has to be established order in the relationship. First of all, let your sons and daughters know you are not mind readers. You know, you know, you have to let your sons and daughters know communication is everything. Yes, I may be connected to you heart to heart. There may be times when I know stuff that's going on with you, but there are also times that I don't know. So guess what? Let your sons and daughters know I'm not a mind reader. Despite what my gifts may be, despite how God may reveal stuff to me, so I'm not a mind reader. Let them know that you're not a mind reader. Again, as a parent, sometimes you can sense in the natural and with your spiritual sons and daughters. You can sense when some things are going on with your sons and daughters. But how many of y'all know not all the time? Sometimes you may not be tuned in. You know, sometimes you can pick up the phone and call and hear them say hello, but you already know, oh, this is a different hello. They going through something. Again, the only way that you will know this type of stuff is if you spend relation, if you uh, have a relationship with people. But if a person don't really have a relationship with you, they can't tell the difference between your silent times. Meaning you can be an individual who is a quiet person by nature. But somebody that's in tune to you know the difference between your quiet times when you don't say anything. And in both situations, you're not saying anything. But somebody that's connected to you, no, oh no, something else is going on. Hey, Erica. And so, uh, so sons and daughters, you know, communicate. Communicate to your spiritual mother and father and refuse to become offended because you think that they should know what you're going through. No, that's not always the case. So communicate. Don't get in your feelings. Don't get offended because you feel like they should just know because they're my spiritual mother or they're my spiritual father. That ain't always the case. So sometimes just talk about what's really going on. It's okay to have a conversation with your spiritual mother and father. It's okay to see them sometime and say, I, I, I just need a hug. You know, sometimes you just need that hug. You know, there's so much in a hug. Sometimes you got to be able to just call and say, you know what? I need some prayer right now because I'm really struggling. And so, or whatever the case may be, I'm dealing with some fear. I'm, you know, whatever it is, be able to communicate. Agree, because we're talking about boundaries that have to be established in these relationships. Agree to some practical times together and determine the best ways to maintain contact with each other, with you and your spiritual sons and daughters, you have to communicate. You have to realize what works best for you. You may have, because uh, your sons and daughters are not the same. You may have one that likes to have phone conversations a lot. You may have another that don't like to have phone conversations a lot, but they will type a whole book in a text. You have to know what works for you with your spiritual son and daughter. And no matter what, there are times when you need phone conversations. There are times when you need face-to-face -face interaction. So guess what? Agree on these things as you're getting to know each other about whether or not, you know, face-to-face -face is good or phone conversations. You know, if it's easiest to communicate through email, because some people, even if you need to reach them in the course of the day, you may get them better through an email, especially if you just need to talk to them or you want to send a prayer to them, whatever the case may be. Texting, you know, sometimes face-to-face -face on FaceTime. You know, these are things that you have to work out. And so what works with one doesn't necessarily work with another son or daughter. So there's not a cookie cutter formula. How many of y'all know that's why it's impossible to have a hundred and hundreds, hundreds, a hundred sons and daughters. When you really talk about real intimacy and what it's about, Jesus had 12. Jesus had the multitude that he ministered to. But come on now, Jesus himself only took 12 up underneath his wing. 
But you got some of us that want to have hundreds of sons and daughters. And for real, there's no real spiritual parenting going on. A lot of it is just entitled only. You know, because spiritual parenting requires your time. You should be able to have some face-to-face, one-on-one personal time with your son and daughter. You should be able to have a good conversation where you have taken time out of your schedule to make time to communicate, not just happen to stumble across some time. You know, there's a lot that goes into it. Time is important. Please understand that. But both of you, the spiritual parent and the spiritual children, both of you have other responsibilities that you have in your life. And so in these relationships, you must be considerate. You must be considerate. You know, I have times when, you know, I let some know that straight up right now, this is me and my husband, husband time. I, I, I love you. You know, you may be in the mood to talk right now, but I got a husband. And so, you know, there are things that you have to consider as far as the boundaries that take place. Bless the Lord, Carla. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, Vicki. Uh, good to have you in uh, on Victoria. And so the time is important. So you have to respect each other's time because your sons and daughters, they have a life too. They have other things going on besides interacting with you. And so schedule some time. You know, just like we put everything else on our schedules, you need to schedule time to spend with your spiritual sons and daughters. I'm telling you, for those of you all that are on here and you may have spiritual fathers and you may have spiritual mothers and you see that a lot of these qualities are missing in the relationship, then maybe there's some things you need to pray about. A lot of times people are stepping into positions or, or, or taking on, you know, uh, uh, just feeling good because somebody calling them mom, dad, or whatever the case may be. But, you know, it's a lot to it. And it's something that shouldn't be taken lightly. And that's why you have so many people in the kingdom that are starving. I shared about the guy who was in a mega church who was very active in his church, but he had made a decision that he was leaving his church because he said, if just one of the leaders in this church would take one day out of the month just to sit with me and have coffee with me and talk to me and just see how I'm doing. He said, I might stay. That person was looking for spiritual parenting. And sometimes what a person may have lacked in the natural sense they may even be looking for some of those things in the spiritual sense from their spiritual parents. So you have to be mindful of all these things. And so, you know, in these relationships, you have to schedule time. You know, I have some individuals that are say, okay, you know, what's on your schedule this, this day? You know, it's good for us to have some time because we take those moments. You know, I had a moment not long ago where, you know, me and one, one of my spiritual daughters, she was like, can I go with you? And I was at a point, I just wasn't trying to go anywhere. I was tired, but she was like, can I go with you? And it was just something in the look of her eye. It was almost like, I just wanted to spend some time with you. And so the blessed part about it, we went, the service was canceled, you know, uh, canceled. We ended up going and having uh, uh, dinner together. And we just had some good old quality time. You know, again, you had different children that have different needs. Your sons and daughters have different needs, but everybody needs time. So guess what? In your busy schedule, we put everything else on our schedule. Schedule some time with your sons and daughters. Determine how often you all will actually meet and for how long. You know, uh, sometimes you may want to set up one face-to-face -face meeting a month. Once a month. That may be the case. It may be once every two months. It depends. You work it out with your spiritual mother and father, but... One face-to-face -face meeting a month may work for one while you may have another child, a son and daughter, who needs more time. See, because again, it all depends on where your spiritual son or daughter is in their life. So you may have one that may be a little more mature, may not need that more time or whatever, but you have one that need more time. And not, not, not let me say mature, because in the natural, I'm thinking about my two kids. I have two kids uh, uh, that I birthed. Uh, one of my daughters has always been very clingy forever. The other daughter had, was never really clingy. So both of them have different needs. One may want to just come cuddle up and all that and spend more time and laugh. The other one like, what's up, mom? 
You know, I mean, what's up? You know, we got our own way of communicating. But know your spiritual sons and daughters and deal with them accordingly. Um, uh, planning is good, but guess what? Know that there's nothing wrong with just doing things spontaneous too. Spontaneous interactions with your sons and daughters. When you have spiritual parenting relationships, because we're dealing with setting some uh, established order, you have to understand you can love your spiritual father. You can love your spiritual mother. As a spiritual parent, you can love your sons and daughters. But please understand that relational problems may occur. I don't care how much you love them. Relational problems may occur. Good relationships can experience challenges. So don't quit at the first sign of a challenge. If you think about marriage, your husband, your spouse could be the bomb. Y'all have a wonderful relationship, but trust and believe y'all gonna have the moments when y'all go through. It's no different in the spiritual parenting relationship. So if you notice up front, you won't have unrealistic expectations. And then because you think, because that's my spiritual mother or father, and they just a, a awesome wonder and nothing will ever happen. Well, guess what? There will come a time when they will rub you the wrong way or something may take place and it get underneath your skin. Well, guess what? That ain't the first time to quit. I tell those that connect with me, I say, I say, I can promise you one thing. I said, I promise you, I will make you mad. You deal with me long enough, I will make you mad. You will get upset. Uh, uh, and usually when you get upset, it's going to be because of some area that I'm dealing with that you don't want to deal with. You will get upset with me. I said, but guess what? Know my heart. It's coming from a place of love because you correct those that you love. Amen. And so sometimes stuff will happen. And you have some people that's a little more sensitive than others. But no matter how good the relationship is, know that things will happen. But don't quit the relationship at the first sign of a complication or unpredicted circumstances. Because you can't predict everything. Some people want to know, you know, well, what's going to happen in the future? How is it going to be? Will you ever, you know, sometimes people say, you know, will, will you ever stop dealing with me? You know, is our relationship going to always be the same? All Relationships always change. Again, the relationship you have with your younger kids, when they become adults, the dynamics of the relationship changes. And so sometimes when they're younger, in the spirit, so to say, they may need more time. They may, they may need more attention. But as they begin to grow and develop, they may not need as much. And so even though the dynam dynamic shift, it doesn't mean that the relationship is over. But trust me, don't throw in the towel. Don't get frustrated and quit. Just as soon as you learn that they have done something or they done rubbed you the wrong way. Okay? Um, spiritual parents, when it comes down to it, they help their sons and daughters uh, to grow, okay? But don't take on too much responsibility for your sons and daughters' growth. We help our sons and daughters to grow. That's our assignment to help them. But you don't want to take on too much responsibility for their growth. Again, you want them to be able to discern the will of God. You want them to be able to hear the voice of God. You want them to be able to know how to apply the word in a particular situation. You want them to know how to use plain old common sense in situations. And so you can't do everything for a child and expect them to learn how to do it on their own. So sometimes you back up. You don't want to take on all the responsibility for their spiritual growth. And the reason why you want to have boundaries in this area is because you want to guard against the unhealthy dependence. You don't want them to depend on you for everything. Next thing you know, you'll find an unhealthy soul tie that's actually taking place. And so we don't want to retard their growth. We want to help them to grow. So there has to be balance. There has to be boundaries. Uh, there's a, a gentleman named Tony Fitzgerald, and this is what he said on the subject. He said, and hear this. He said, fathering is not to meet every need, but to be sure every need is met. Can I say that one more time? Fathering is not to meet 
every need, but to be sure every need is met. See, a spiritual parent may not deal directly with you on a particular subject, but they will direct a son or daughter to a book that may can help them or a CD or a DVD or other spiritual leaders or counselors to meet a particular need. They may not meet it personally themselves, but they're going to make sure that that need is met. Even if it means study this book because this book will help you. I'm not going to tell you everything you need to know, but what you need to know and what I know you need to know, guess what? I need you to go after it. I need you to seek after it. You may not know where to look, but here, this is what I'm going to give you, but I'm not going to give it to you on a spoon every single time. And so you have to have the boundaries. Uh, in the relationship, either party, be, if either party becomes possessive or demanding, an unhealthy dependency forms, and we don't want that. Spiritual parents actually push their sons or daughters to have a relationship again with the Holy Spirit more than just trusting in you. Yes, we're your spiritual mother, we're your spiritual father, and yes, we are here to help you and to guide you, but we don't want you to be so dependent upon, upon us that you don't trust the Holy Spirit like you need to. You trust more in the, your spiritual parent than you do the Holy Spirit, and it ought not be so. And so if the dynamics of the relationship shift for whatever reason, because, you know, we said sometimes you will have relational problems. Let's just say the dynamics of the spiritual son and daughter relationship changes with this spiritual parenting for whatever reason. Guess what? In well. Some relationships do come to an end and, and, and y'all relationship can shift for whatever reason end well, if the relationship must end, it doesn't have to end in a negative way. You know, it can end in a respectful way, but the bottom line is end well, if it must end being a spiritual father or mother is not a duty. People of God. It's a privilege. It is a privilege and it is an honor for someone that you did not birth from your loins to look to you and respect you as a mother or a father. It is a privilege. Again, everybody don't see you like that. I'm a pastor. I have multiple people that I shepherd. Everybody in my church does not see me as a spiritual mother. I understand that. Am I the pastor to everyone in there? Yes. And I do my assignment well. But you even as a pastor, you have different relationships with different people. And so again, just because you pastor people, it doesn't make you their spiritual parent. And so it is not a duty, it is a privilege. It is something that should never be taken lightly or even entered into without counting the cause. You have to count the cause of what it means to really be somebody's spiritual mother or to be their spiritual father. Count the cause. Spiritual parenting is not easy, but it is rewarding even with the ups and downs. It's not easy, but just like a natural parent, when you see your children advancing and growing in life and even doing some of the things that you told them. You know, you can give them wisdom and advice and you don't always know if they're going to take it. But it's a wonderful thing when you can sit back and see the rewards of all that you put into the relationship, the heart-to-heart -heart relationship. You know, it's, it's a rewarding situation. Like I said, even with the ups and downs. Natural and spiritual children have the potential to give you the greatest joy. But how many of y'all know those same children have the potential to give you the greatest pain? Now, that's a real one right there. I can think of one of my spiritual daughters from years ago. And, and, and when dynamics changed, and not because of me, but because of some things that she just started to do in her life, 
that put a wedge in between our relationship and just me seeing her going on that path. She may not have been my blood child, but that thing hurt me to my core like one of my own children. One thing about it, your children can make you happy. They can make you proud. But those are the same ones that can cause your knees to become black because you weigh them out praying for them because you can hurt because they can cause you some great pain from some of the decisions that you make because, again, you don't control them. They make the decisions. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't affect you. Aisha asked the question, hey there, Clarence, uh, does getting or having a spiritual parent come natural? Yes. Yes. There should be a natural connection with that individual. It's not something that you should have to force or, you know, you feel weird to talk to them or don't want to talk to them and things of that nature. No, it's a natural progression. That's why I say it. It's impossible for somebody to really become your spiritual mother or father and you've only had one encounter with them. Or let's just say for real, you've seen them preach. You've seen them preach and now they're your mother or father. Really? You don't know them. And guess what? They don't know you. Again, there's so much foolery in the kingdom until it's unreal. But when you think about a real intimate parenting relationship... Jesus Christ knew his twelve. Guess what? Joshua walked with Moses. Elijah, Elisha walked with Elijah. When you think about Naomi and Ruth, they was there together. We're talking about intimate relationships that are built over time. And so... When it comes down to it, again, it shouldn't be taken lightly. Uh, your spiritual sons and daughters, they can cause you, give you the greatest joy, but they can also be the same ones that can give you the greatest pain. Spiritual parenting, I can't emphasize it enough. It requires time. Busyness is the destroyer of spiritual parenting. Busyness is the destroyer a spiritual parenting. If you don't have time for me, what do we have? If you don't, if you're too busy, if I'm going through, I'm your son or I'm your daughter and I'm having a moment and I really need you for real and you can't make time for me because you're too busy and this becomes a pattern, guess what? I don't need you. That's not what I need. Again, you may not be one that need a person on a continual regular basis, but guess what? You want somebody that is able to see you as a priority and not just a pastime. And so busyness is the destroyer of spiritual parenting. I know this to be true on so many levels. Because you have some individuals that will connect with the people and they're looking for something and they don't get it. And because they don't get what they're looking for, they do what? Disconnect. And so people of God, spiritual parenting is needed like never before. Jesus Christ set the model in place. He spent most of his time with his 12 disciples, his spiritual sons. He set the example. His style of discipleship is rarely seen in the church today. We too focus on other stuff. We too focus on program. We just focus on so much stuff that ain't God. We are not following the biblical example that have been set before us. Jesus put it in motion. It should still be happening today. But a lot of times we just have in church. People have voids in their life. They look or they need spiritual mothers and fathers. But some of us are too busy. And so his style of discipleship, what Jesus did, which set the pace, you don't see it in the churches no more. 
again, because people are too busy. And so when it comes down to spiritual parenting, guess what? Call it whatever you want to call it. Whatever name you want to give it, whether you want to call it mentoring, whether you want to call it discipleship, whether you want to call it coaching, whether you want to call it spiritual fathering or mother, whatever floats your boat, guess what? It basically boils down to the same thing. Anyone know what that is? Caring about the spiritual growth of another person. That's what spiritual parenting is about. Caring about the spiritual growth of another person and being willing to commit yourself and dedicate yourself to helping an individual to be all that they can be in Christ Jesus. It's missing. It's needed. But I believe this was a teaching that was necessary because a lot of people don't have understanding on it. The Bible is clear because, like Paul said, you don't have many fathers. He may not have had the people addressing him as father because, you know, there is a passage that says, call no man father. But we understood the dynamics. Even when he said, you haven't had many fathers. You may have had many teachers, but you ain't had many fathers. He knew his responsibility. He knew who he was in their life. And so I pray that this teaching has been a blessing. Part one, that was good. That was off the chain good. Part two was good. Part one and two, if you missed it, again, go to my YouTube channel. Uh, look up Apostle Tanya Mitchell and you will find those parts there. This actually uh, completes this teaching on spiritual parenting. I pray that it has truly been a blessing to you and that you've gotten more understanding. And as believers, we should all desire to take someone underneath our wing. We should desire. You don't have to be a pastor to be a spiritual mother and father. You don't have to be a bishop or an apostle to be somebody's spiritual mother or father. You just have to be a person that cares enough to pour into the life of another person. Thank you, Aisha. You say I'm the bomb.com. Hey. So y'all keep me in prayer. I will not be on doing any Tuesday Night Lives for the next couple of weeks because I will be in Nigeria. I am so excited. I'm getting ready to roll out of here. Uh, guess what, y'all? Saturday is my birthday. Hey. Hey, look, y'all. Don't I look good for 51? 51. Hey. Yes, yeah, Saturday is my birthday. Uh, Sunday, wheels up on the plane, and I'm headed to Nigeria. And so um, just keep me in your prayers. Again, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to God doing some great things as I travel abroad uh, in, into international territories. And so, again, whenever you come on, you say, no. You say, I just look good. Thank you, baby. My husband said, no, you just look good. I just look good, period. And ain't got nothing to do with the age 51, just period. I, I, I know that's right. So, anyway, um... Uh, I, if this teaching has been a blessing to you, you know, I always put the information up there for you to actually sow. You can sow just to bless me tonight. You can sow a seed because you want to say your birthday Saturday, you're turning 51. Hey, happy birthday. You may want to be an individual that sows into me getting to Africa as well as uh, 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 being able to function while I'm there. If anybody knows anything about traveling on an international scale, it is costly. And can I tell you, I thank God because when this door opened, I, I stepped out in faith because I literally did not have the money at all to go, to get the shots, to do the visa, to get the passport, all of that. I didn't have it. I didn't even have a clue as to how much it would actually cost. But I thank God because he has shown himself faithful. And I am going because people have been a blessing. I've said it doesn't matter if it's a small seed or a large seed because all of it adds up. 
And because people can may have just seen me on Facebook, I will get a notification and say I'm sowing into good ground. And so I thank you in advance. You still got time to sow before I go. But anyway, I thank you all for tuning in. I pray that you have been blessed. Hey there, Lemuel, how you doing, sir? And so I pray that this teaching has been a blessing to you. If you have questions, um, you can type your questions even after I get off because I go back and I look at all of the comments. Um, if you have questions, you can inbox me. If you need more understanding or anything, just inbox me. Hey there, Bishop Brown, how you doing, sir? And so again, go and look at parts one and part two if you missed it because this is a teaching that needs to be taught. Because with all that getting, get understanding. We won't have so many people feeling depleted in the kingdom of God if they knew what to look for from a spiritual mother and father. It is more than just a title and it's more than just a hug. It's a lot to being somebody's spiritual mother and father. And it goes beyond preaching the gospel. Because pastors preach the gospel every week to their congregation. But again, they're not the mother and the father of everyone that they pastor. Yes, they're their pastor. But parenting is personal. Parenting is intimate. And so I love you all. Enjoy the rest of your night. I'm out.